Hello and welcome to today's lecture on Amendment of Constitution. After going through this lecture, we shall come to know about the meaning and concept of amendment, the rationale underlying amendment, various types of amendments, the power and procedure for the constitutional amendment. We know the life of nation is dynamic, living and organic. Its political, social and economic conditions are always subject to change. Therefore, the constitution drafted in one era in a particular context may not be suitable in another era in different context. The constitutional law being the fundamental law of land has to keep pace with the changing times. It has to adapt to the changing needs, changing philosophy and changing life of the people. It therefore requires some mechanism, process or machinery for effecting the change to solve the contemporary needs of people. Such a mechanism is known as amendment. Thus, amendment of constitution is the method or process of making change to the fundamental law of the land or the supreme law. The word amendment has been derived from a latent term amendry which means to make right, to correct or to rectify. In Black's Law Dictionary, the word amendment has been defined as the formal revision or addition proposed or made to a statute, constitution or other instrument, a change made by addition, deletion or correction, especially an alteration of wordings. We can also say that amendment is a process to mold or alter the provisions of the constitution. Practically, every constitution has some method of formal constitutional amendment. Amendment consists of changing the language of a constitutional provision so to adapt it to the changing context of social, political and economic needs. For the successful operation of constitution, flexibility is one of the essential conditions. However, undue flexibility can be a source of constitutional instability. Particularly for a federal constitution, rigidity can be a means for securing constitutional stability and a guarantee against the misuse of amending power by the person who hold the political power at a particular time. The makers of the constitution of India were fully aware of these facts. As such, while providing for a written constitution, they also provided for a method of amendment of the constitution, a method which was both rigid as well as flexible. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru rightly observed, while we want this constitution to be as solid and permanent as we can make it, there is no permanence in the constitution. There should be certain flexibility. If you make everything rigid and permanent, you stop nation's growth, the growth of living, vital and organic people. Commenting upon the attempts of the makers to introduce the flexibility and rigidity in the constitution of India, Jennings observed, it has been devised to safeguard the basic provisions of the constitution from hasty changes and at the same time to render any easy alteration of its less important aspects possible and thus to impart a degree of flexibility to it. The Supreme Court also observed in its judgments that while the parliament has a right to amend every part of the constitution, it cannot change the basic structure of constitution. This observation also reflects intention of framers to accept flexibility in general along with rigidity in respect of certain basic features of the constitution. Broadly speaking, there are two modes of amending the constitution. First, informal method and formal method. Under informal method of amendment, the letter or the wording of the law does not change, but its meaning and import changes. This method includes amendment by changing a well-established convention and amendment by changing the interpretation of the constitution. Under formal method of amendment, the text of law changes, that is, the written provision of the constitution is changed by way of addition, variation or repeal. Formal method of amendment is contained under Article 368 of the Constitution. 
the constitution of india in its part 20th contains only one article that's article 368 which deals with the power of the parliament to amend the constitution and procedure for its amendment under this article parliament may in exercise of its constituent power amend by way of addition variation or repeal any provision of the constitution in accordance with the procedure laid down in this article an amendment may be initiated only by the introduction of a bill for this purpose in either house of the parliament that is either lok sabha or rajya sabha the bill can be introduced either by a minister or by a private member and does not require prior permission of the president the bill must be passed in each house by special majority that is a majority of more than 50% of the total membership of the house and a majority of two thirds of members of the house present and voting. Each house must pass the bill separately. In case of a disagreement between two houses, there is no provision for holding a joint sting of two houses for the purpose of deliberation and passage of bill. If the bill seeks to amend the federal provisions of the constitution, it must also be ratified by the legislatures of half of the states by a simple majority, that is, a majority of the members of the House present and voting. After duly passed by both the Houses of the Parliament and ratified by the state legislatures, wherever necessary, the bill is presented to the President for assent. The President must give his assent to the bill. He can neither withhold his assent to the bill nor return the bill for reconsideration of the parliament. After the president's assent, the bill becomes an act, that is, a constitutional amendment act, and the constitution stands amended in accordance with the terms of the act. Article 368 provides for two types of amendments, that is, by special majority of parliament and also through the ratification of half of the states by a simple majority. However, along with it, the Union Parliament has been vested with the power to change some specified articles of the Constitution through the exercise of its law-making powers by a simple majority of Parliament, that is, a majority of the members of each House present and voting, similar to that of ordinary legislative process. Further, there are two articles of the Constitution, Article 249 and 312, by virtue of which the Council of States can effect changes by passing resolutions supported by two-third majority of the members present and voting. But the Constitution itself declares that the changes thus made shall not be deemed as amendment of the Constitution. Therefore, the Constitution can be amended in three ways. Amendment by simple majority of the parliament, amendment by special majority of the parliament, and amendment by special majority of the parliament and the ratification of half of the state legislatures. Amendment by simple majority of parliament. This type of amendment can be effected by simple majority such as that is required for the passing of any ordinary law the amendment under this category are specifically excluded from the purview of Article 368. A number of provisions in the Constitution can be amended by a simple majority of the two Houses of Parliament. These provisions include admission or establishment of new states, formation of new states and alteration of areas, boundaries or names of the existing states, abolition or creation of legislative councils in the states. Amendment by special majority of parliament. The majority of the provisions in the constitution need to be amended by special majority of the parliament, that is, a majority which is more than 50% of the total membership of each house and a majority of two-thirds of the members of each house present and voting. The expression total membership means the total number of members comprising of the House irrespective of the fact whether there are vacancies or absentees. Strictly speaking, the special majority is required only for voting at the third reading stage of the bill. But by way of abundant caution, 
the requirement for special majority has been provided for in the rules of the houses in respect of all the effective stages of the bill. The provisions which can be amended by this way include fundamental rights, directive principles of state policy. Now the amendment by special majority of parliament and consent of the states. Those provisions of the constitution which are related to the federal structures of the polity can be amended by special majority of the parliament and also with the consent of half of the state legislatures by simple majority. If one or some or all the remaining states take no action on the bill, it does not matter the moment half of the state give the consent, the formality gets completed. There is no time limit within which the states should give their consent to the bill. Thus, in respect of federal features of the constitution, a rigid method of amendment has been prescribed. In the case of Kihota Holohon versus Sechula, 10th schedule to the constitution inserted by Constitutional 52nd Amendment Act 1985 excluded the jurisdiction of all the courts including the Supreme Court and High Courts under Articles 136, 226 and 227 on the question of disqualification on the ground of defection was struck down as unconstitutional since it was not enacted complying with the requirement of proviso to class 2 of article 368 which required ratification of amendment by at least half of the state legislators. An analysis of the procedure prescribed by article 368 of the constitution for amendment reveals that an amendment can be initiated only by the introduction of a bill in either house of parliament. The bill so initiated must be passed in each house by a majority of total membership and by a majority of not less than two thirds of the members present and voting. There is no provision for a joint sting in case of disagreement between the two houses. When the bill is so passed, it must be presented to the president who shall give his assent to the bill. Where the amendment seeks to make any change in any of the provisions mentioned in the proviso to article 368, it must be ratified by not less than half of the state legislators. Such ratification is to be by a resolution passed by the state legislators. No specific time limit for ratification of the amending bill by the state legislators is laid down. The resolution Ratifying the proposed amendment should however be passed before the amending bill is presented before the president for his assent. To conclude, we can say that no earthly wisdom can foresee every possible situation which might have to be faced. It is therefore impossible to have a constitution which can settle down all the situations of all the times. For standing the test of dynamic nature, the constitution has to adopt itself to changing needs and times. That is why the provisions regarding the amendment has been incorporated in the constitution itself. There are three methods of amendment in constitution of India. Amendment by simple majority, amendment by special majority and amendment by ratification by half of state legislatures. While the first method of amendment is an easy method, the second method of amendment is somewhat rigid. The third type of amendment is indeed more rigid type of amendment. It has been incorporated for granting more protection to the federal features of the constitution again as the possible unilateral attempts of the union to change these for its own advantage. The power to initiate an amendment to the constitution lies with the parliament except in one case that is passing a resolution requesting the parliament for the creation or abolition of legislative councils in the state. Here also, the parliament can either approve or disapprove such a resolution or may not take any action on it. Major part of the constitution can be amended by the parliament alone, either by a special majority or by a simple majority. Only in few cases, the consent of the state legislatures is required and that too only half of them. The constitution does not prescribe the time frame within which the state legislatures should ratify or reject an amendment submitted to them. Also, it is silent 
on the issue whether the states can withdraw their approval after recorded the same. The process of amendment is similar to that of legislative process. Except for the special majority, the constitutional amendment bills are to be passed by the parliament in the same way as ordinary bills. There is no provision for holding a joint sting of both the houses of parliament if there is a deadlock over the passage of a constitutional amendment bill. On the other hand, a provision for a joint sting is made in the case of an ordinary bill. The variety of constitutional amendment methods reflect a mixture of rigidity and flexibility. Commenting upon it, Dr. Ambedkar observed, I quote, the Constituent Assembly has not only refrained from putting a seal of finality and infallibility upon the Constitution as in Canada or from making the amendment of the Constitution subject to the fulfillment of extraordinary terms and conditions as in America and Australia, but has provided a most facile procedure." Unquote. KCVR has admired the variety of amendment procedure contained in the Constitution of India. He said, this variety in the amending process is wise but rarely found. According to G. Austin, the amending process has proved itself one of the most ably conceived aspects of the Constitution. Although it appears complicated, it is merely diverse. With this, we conclude today's lecture on amendment of Constitution. Hope you enjoyed and understood well. Thank you and goodbye.